Hello, 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 everybody. Thank you for clicking on the channel. Welcome back. I hope that you're ready to feast in the Word of God so we can build up our spirit, man, and we're just fellowshipping you all. So if you're ready to eat some victuals, grab your sword, your Bible, and let's dig in. Today, I want to visit leadership and the consequences of bad decisions. Let's visit an event with King David, and we can find that in 1 Chronicles chapter 21. And we're starting at verse 1. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. And David said to Joab and to the rulers of the people, Go, number Israel from Beersheba even to Dan, and bring the number to me that I may know it. And Joab answered, The Lord make his people a hundred times so many more as they be. But my Lord the King, are they not all my Lord's servants? Why then does my Lord require this thing? Why will he be a curse of trespass to Israel? Because of the promise that God gave Abraham that his seed will be more than the stars of the sky and more than the sands of the sea. So that's innumerable. There's also something else going on here. Pride is showing up. David is king and Joab is commander. What the boss says must go. But we know that there's a king over all kings and Lord over all lords. So Joab being commander, he delegates the mission to his subordinates and they head out to conduct a census on the people of Israel. At verse 5, And Joab gave the sum of the number of the people unto David. And all they of Israel were a thousand, thousand, and a hundred thousand men that drew sword. And Judah was four hundred, threescore, and ten thousand men that drew sword. See, it was not just about counting the people. David had an agenda in mind. He wanted the census on the people so that he can keep recruiting men into the army. We see further over in chapter 27, they did not count men under the age of 21. And verse 6, But Levi and Benjamin counted he not among them, for the king's word was abominable to Joab. And God was displeased with this thing, therefore he smote Israel. We're getting ready to see Satan show up and God show up. Remember verse 1, it tells us that Satan provoked David to commit a census against the people of Israel. But Satan don't have authority unless God grant him authority to do anything. God allow it and we allow it. Through our disobedience, how he tempt us in our flesh and we fall weak to our flesh and then God allowing it for a chastisement or God inviting him to our life as he did with Job. In this case, it was chastisement against the people of Israel and to try David's heart. And verse 8, And David said unto God, I have sinned greatly because I have done this thing. But now I beseech thee, do away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. And God spake unto Gad, David seers. God is going to issue David if you all are reading along. I hope that you're following along. Gad will issue David three choices for his chastisement. God chastised those he loved. Old Testament, New Testament mirrors each other. We have to know what is natural in the people of Israel's walk and what is spiritual in our walk. God does not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and all of tomorrow. Take a look at these choices. Which one would you choose? In verse 11, So Gad came to David and said unto him, Thus said the Lord, Choose thee either three years famine or three months to the destroyer before thy foes while that the sword of thine enemies overtake thee or else three days the sword of the Lord even the pestilence in the land and the angel of the Lord destroying throughout all the coasts of Israel now therefore advise thyself what word I shall bring again to him that sent me and David's choice. And David said unto Gad, I am in great strait. Let me fall now into the hand of the Lord. For every great are his mercies. But let me not fall into the hand of man. So he's choosing three days of a pestilence. 
Still, life is going to be lost, but this is supposed to be a lesser of the three choices. Why wouldn't God just chastise David and leave the people out of it? Well, the people were not without sin. We all have choices and we all have a part to play. Everybody did not die. God could have swept the nation clean as he did in the days of Noah with the flood and left only a few to repopulate. In verse 15, And God sent an angel unto Jerusalem to destroy it. And as he was destroying, the Lord beheld, and he repented him of the evil, and said to the angel that destroyed, It is enough. Stay now thy hand. And the angel of the Lord stood by the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. The angel of the Lord destroying. There was a pestilence that the angel was pouring out on the people. The angel had a sword, is mentioned here. He was not beheading the people. He was not thrusting them through with the sword. The sword was pouring out a pestilence. A life-threatening, life-taking plague. Humans could not stop it. They had people to practice medicine, using the knowledge that they had for their time period. But when God pronounced something or allowed something, there's nothing that humans can do to stop it except to repent. We have prayers going out across different social media now that people are calling for God to heal the land. Healing the land from violence, healing the land from pandemic, healing the land from starvation, healing the land from homelessness, healing the land from civil unrest, healing the land from child abuse, elderly abuse, and many, many other things that we petition the throne of God for, for God's intervention. And we should. God is our help. When we read the scriptures, we need to stay with what God says about how he moves. He shows us his nature in the scriptures, Old Testament and New. Healing the land was a physical geographical area. But it also was how they think. Us too. God heals this land. He told the people over in Isaiah, in the 58th chapter of Isaiah, change your wicked ways and I will heal the land. Our ways is what God calls wicked. He always have called the human's ways wicked and then tell us to change it. That's the changing of the mind for the new convert Christians according to Romans 12 and 1. If the mind don't change, the land stays sick. This land, how we think is how we operate and go out and navigate in the earth. So we make God's natural land sick. And the land can spew us out in your local area where you live. Whatever you have your hands to, whether it's in your family or outside of your family. Verse 16. And David lifted up his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord stand between heaven and the earth, having a sword drawn in his hand, stretched out over Jerusalem. Then David and the elders of Israel, who were clothed in sackcloth, fell upon their faces. And David said unto God, Is it not I that commanded the people to be numbered? Even I it is that have sinned and done evil indeed. But as for these sheep, what have they done? Let thine hand, I pray thee, O Lord my God, be on me and my father's house, but not on thy people, that they should be plagued. He's asking for God to allow him to suffer, even his family to suffer, and not the general populace of people. Now in this passage, he's being a good leader. Do you notice that he called the people sheep? God found faithfulness in him and called him out of the sheepfold to be over the nation of Israel. But God calls the people sheep. Aren't we still called sheep? When Jesus told the disciples, feed my sheep, we're still sheep. In verse 18, then the angel of the Lord commanded Gad to say to David that David should go up and set an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. And by the way, this threshing floor, later on, Solomon, David's son, builds the temple of the Lord at this same place. And David went up at the saying of Gad, which he spake in the name of the Lord. Let's go down. Drop down to verse 22. Then David said to Ordnan, grant me the place of this threshing floor, that I may build an altar therein unto the Lord. Thou shalt grant it to me for the full price, that the plague may be stayed from the people. 
And Ornan said to David, take it and let my Lord the king do that which is good in his eyes. I give thee the oxen also for burnt offering and the threshing instruments for wood and the wheat for the meat offering. I give it all. I don't blame Ornan. He didn't want the plague to hit his house. He didn't know how close it was. He said, let me help you out. And King David said to Ornan, nay, but I will build it by for the full price. For I will not take that which is thine for the Lord, nor offer burnt offering without cost. Our burnt offering would cost also as a sacrifice of our life. So David gave to Ornan for the place 600 shekels of gold by weight. And David built there an offering unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings and called upon the Lord. And he answered him from heaven by fire upon the altar of the burnt offering. Our burnt offering is us. Don't naturally harm your physical body, your temple. Don't burn it. Don't cut it. Don't shoot it. Don't put drugs and alcohol in. Don't do anything to your natural temple. This is spiritual now. We're to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, not a damaged sacrifice, a living sacrifice. And the answer of the Lord, it comes in our spirit. That's the fire of God is the spirit of God. And the Lord commanded the angel and he put up his sword again into the sheath thereof. And at that time, when David saw that the Lord had answered him in the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite, then he sacrificed there. The plague was stopping. Joab and the other soldiers was bringing him report. That's how he knew that things were settling down. For the tabernacle of the Lord, which Moses made in the wilderness and the altar of the burnt offering were at the season in the high place of Gibeon. But David could not go before it to inquire of God. For he was afraid because of the sword of the angel of the Lord. Angels play a significant part in God's court and in the earth amongst us humans. Angels protect. Angels destroy. What angels? We have many witnesses that we can call upon in the scriptures. Remember how God offered Job to Satan and Satan responded with, you have a hedge of protection around him. Those were angels. God said, well, I'll call them off. Now you go in. He had the hedge of protection, which are the angels, to fall back and told the angels of destruction, move forward. We may question God and ask, how can a God of love commit such atrocities upon the human race when the human race is vulnerable against an all-powerful God? But we are all God's investment. God invests his breath inside of our vessels. And then we choose to do what we're going to do with these vessels and with this breath. If we choose to be disobedient in our own pride and arrogance, we're actually inviting destruction into our own life. Remember, we can invite Satan into our life. Or God can offer him to try us, try our motives, try our faithfulness, and try our commitment. Because when God's wrath shows up, it can show up swift. And leaders who make bad decisions can cause people who are subject to them to fall. And a lot can be lost. Everybody does not have to fall. The grace of God covers. The blood of Jesus covers. Let's keep praying, you all. We can't afford to stop. I hope I said something that you can ponder and that was enlightening. And you all come back to visit with me. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And let's see what else we can find to chew on. Take care, you all. Bye-bye.